Welcome back, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Platypuses. How you doing today? It's SJB here, and today we're talking about banana farms. We want to talk about banana farms, the economy of banana farms, and we want to talk a little bit about, you know, is there a way to make more money than just using banana farms? And the answer to that is a sneaky yes. You can do that. But today's focus is still going to be mostly about how to use banana farms, which banana farms to use, and uh, understanding the efficiency of banana farms, which is all really, really important understanding the economy of Bloom Star Defense 6. I want to mention to you guys that this is a no-nonsense guide, but I want to point out that, realistically, banana farms are not a set in stone, 100% this is the answer kind of solution. There's a lot of, it depends on your situation. It depends on this and it depends on that, but I'm gonna try to break it down for you guys in as much, with as much ease as I possibly can. So we can actually quantify banana farms to the best of our ability. And I think that's what's important for a lot of newer players is understanding just a quantification using a base number. And to understand the number for banana farms, you have to look at this right here. Banana farms are going to make a certain amount of money per round. It's based on round. It's not based on time or anything like that. Every single round that comes out, round one, round two, round three, is going to make you a certain amount of money. And to quantify banana farms, what we're going to do is we're going to divide the uh, cost of a banana farm, for in this is situation, 1325, divided by 80. And we're going to get what I'm going to call an efficiency rating. All right, that's the amount of rounds it takes for your banana farm to pay for itself. To break even, this is the break even point. If we don't sell it, and if we want to play more rounds, we're going to make more money off of this banana farm. Just to break even, a 0, 0, 0 banana farm is going to have an efficiency rating of 16.56. Now this number is ridiculously important in understanding how good a banana farm is, because we can get an efficiency rating for every single banana farm in the game. Okay, the only one that's a little confusing, which I'm going to break down for you guys, is going to be the monkey bank, because it's a little bit misleading. So let's talk about the main banana farm that almost everybody's going to use. You're going to see this in a lot of a lot of videos, if you're, especially if you're a new player. You notice a lot of people are going to spam a certain amount of farms. They're going to spam quite a few low tier farms in the one zero zero category, or the two zero zero category. All right, any of these banana farms are fine. They're all going to be fairly similarly efficient over here, so you can kind of pick whichever ones you want to use. But generally speaking, most people are going to spam the two zero zero. Okay, now why this is important is that a 0, 0, 0 is going to have an efficiency rating of 16.5, a 1, 0, 0 is going to have 15.4, and a 2, 0, 0 is going to have a 15.7. So believe it or not, in the early game, this is actually the most efficient net far. Believe it or not. Which is kind of weird. But it doesn't really matter that much. Just to understand that any of these banana farms are going to be very, very good. And they're going to make you a crap ton of money in here, guys. When you finally jump into this section over here, you're going to notice that we've got a bunch of different upgrades in the 222 area, right? We can get uh, greater production up to valuable bananas and then up to banana salvage. The main thing that you should notice is that these bottom two don't actually make you any extra money. Sure, they can make things easier to grab or whatever, but they do not make you any extra money, so they lower your efficiency. The long life bananas lowers your efficiency, but valuable bananas can increase your efficiency, not on second tier banana farms. Once you get up to third tiers, that's when you finally want to start thinking about getting Valley Bananas, but until then, stay away from this up upgrade completely. So that leaves us with only one way to get low tier banana farms. Increased production and greater production. Get that every single time to get your game started in here, guys. Trust me, it's going to be pretty awesome. So, usually, most players, again, are going to go for a conglomerate of two zero zero banana farms, because it's a space-saving, easy way to make a lot of money. Now, so far, things have been fairly straightforward. Everything's just been go, go, go. Get two zero banana farms. That's easy. We know we're making lots of money. Things are all good. When we finally switch into the third tiers, this is when things get different. Things get interesting. The two, uh, the two that are actually really easy to understand are Banana Plantation and Marketplace, but Monkey Banks do get a bit weird, but I want to give you guys the numbers regardless. So Banana Plantations are the third tier upgrade to this. It's kind of just a continuation on greater production. They make bananas, uh, and they make more bananas. So, fantastic. We like having more bananas. But what happens when we get a 300 uh, uh, upgrade here is that we actually lower our efficiency, which is pretty sad. It's down to 17.9 from 15.7. So we lost out on a lot of money by getting an upgrade. That's kind of sad. Even when we go up to a 3-2, all right, getting that valuable bananas, making 25% more money, we spent a lot of money on this upgrade, it still is only 16.7. 
So that being said, two zero, zero banana farms are still more efficient than three zero three twos or three zero zeros. So it doesn't mean you're losing out on money completely, but it does mean that Ninja Kiwi kind of incorporated some sort of space into the game. If we just spammed 30, two zero zero banana farms would be more efficient than third tiers, but we can't do that on every map. There's not always tons of open spaces and things like that that we can work with, and that's why they start to make these a smidge less efficient. Now, Marketplace is the other one that's uh, kind of odd, actually. It, as far as efficiencies are concerned, Marketplaces are really, really good. Third tiers... Um, you know, if we already have a bunch of two zero zero banana farms, then we probably want to go straight into a marketplace. And this will have an efficiency, believe it or not, of 15.3. That's currently the best efficiency that we've seen out of any banana farm over here. But what's even more interesting is that if we started with a scratch banana farm, all right, say we, we had enough money that we wanted to build a new banana farm, and instead we went for some sort of valuable bananas, low tier banana farm, into a marketplace that would be a more efficient banana farm at 14.7 the current most efficient banana farm we've seen to date that being said marketplaces and valuable banana uh, marketplaces are going to be super duper duper good all right uh so i would recommend going for those guys when you can but what get, what's interesting about this is that lowers you off because once you get to central markets they start to be a little bit a little bit worse so this is where the confusing part comes in. Where are you trying to make money, guys? If you're just trying to get a couple, three, two banana farms uh, uh, to kind of survive out the game here, make you some extra cash, this is probably enough banana farms to make the game really easy for you. But are you trying to go cray-cray? Are you trying to get ridiculous amounts of cash, ridiculous amounts of stuff? Then you probably want to start upgrading into, you know, some something else. Something bigger. Something stronger. But before we get there, we got to talk about the monkey bank. And this is something that, again, people are going to argue with me about forever. You guys don't ever understand my point here. But I want to point out that the efficiency rating of a banana bank is actually going to be below 10. Comparatively, 14.7, 15, 15.5, 10? Where did that come from? Why is this guy so efficient? And how could Ninja Kiwi make that actually in the game here? Well, 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 take a step back. The efficiency rating is 10, but it's locked up in cash. All right, so the way Banana Bank works is that every single round that you play, you're going to make a certain amount of money, okay? And uh, what's cool about that is that uh, at the end of the round, you know, when we pop this mob or whatever, we're going to make 15% on our money. All right, so uh, I'm just going to say 10% just for ease, ease of purposes here. But, you know, let's say we make $46 off of... Uh, this banana farm right here at the end of every single round. That's not much money. It really isn't. But if we were able to um, get up to, you know, $5,000, then we make $500 at the end of each round. That's a pretty significant amount of money. If we were able to get $7,000, getting $700 at the end of each round is pretty great. Now, don't forget, I'm using 10% of the number, but it's actually 15%. So when we get to our last rounds over here, right before we're going to cash in on our, our, our bank over here, we're actually making over $1,000 every single round. That's pretty fantastic. Yes, it is. And at, again, at the end of all of this, if you can collect the entirety of your bank money over here, you can make uh, an efficiency rating of over 10. But the only difference is, is that if you have a bank versus something like a marketplace, you got to keep in mind that this bank money is tied up. All right, it's going to be stuck in that bank for a long time, where this farm money is straight in your pocket. And if you have a decent amount of uh, you know farms over here, putting money straight in your pocket, you can buy another banana farm, and another banana farm, and another banana farm in the time that this money is stuck inside of your bank. And that means that that money can be used as a, a sort of exponentially exp exponential growth function of banana farms. So even though this is an efficiency rating of about 10, I, I'd like to say that that's a little bit inaccurate because these can then help you make more money and have you have a higher efficiency rating. All right, so again, this might be a little bit confusing, but just understand that banana farms, no matter which one you're making, are gonna make money. But now we move on to fourth tiers. Banana Research Facility, IMF Loan, and Central Market. 
Before I actually mention those, I just want to say, fifth tiers we're not going to talk about too much in today's video, because I feel like at this point, if you're spending $100,000, you don't need my advice. You've got enough money rolling around over there. You're going to be fine. But Banana Centrals are going to uh, make your Banana Research Facilities make more money off of this and increase their efficiency rating. So spamming a bunch of these with one of these guys is actually really, really awesome. Monkey Nomus works really, really good on long rounds, or if you're trying to stall the game in a lot of way, ice and glue and things like that. And Monkey Walls Reach is kind of cool because it just generates a bunch of cash all right in your pocket. So now we're going to talk about the fourth tiers, and these are actually not that complicated. Uh, the top path 420 is going to be one of the most efficient banana farms in the game at a ridiculous 14.0. So, banana research facilities are freaking awesome, man. If you can get a banana research facility, that's great. Only issue with that guy is that obviously the third tier is a little bit less efficient, so getting the money necessary to get this guy could be a little bit difficult. Then we want to talk about the IMF loan, which is something that, again, the longer uh, the rounds are, the better off you're going to be. And you do have this deposit function now, which could help you kind of make some weird cash flow things happen. But I would still stay away from IFM loan in most situations. I think most people just ignore this as an upgrade. Too much work for the amount of effort and interest and things that you're actually getting out of this guy. And then what's even more interesting is even though the marketplaces were really, really, really good, uh, as far as our efficiency rating was concerned, the central market is not quite as good. All right, this is going to be a 15.3. Which is not, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. Not bad. 15.3 is decent enough. But it's it's not any, uh, it's not a 14, right? It's, it's not a 14, and it's not any more efficient than our third tier already is. So the fourth tiers here are kind of just used for the other benefits that you get out of them, like merchantmen making extra income. Or things like that. So, to reiterate, now that we've kind of got banana farms down, we understand banana farms, which banana farms should you be using? And the correct answer is always a mix. You don't want to just build one banana farm type. You want to do a mix. But if I was playing this game, if you're asking me, somebody who's been playing this game for a long time, I would always go for a decent amount of 2-0 banana farms. Maybe 3, maybe 4, maybe something like that. I would probably, because I'm freaking lazy, have a banana farmer over here. I would eventually go uh, and upgrade up to 3rd uh, tier banana farms and 4th tier banana farms. I think top paths are just the way to go. Because they're easy. They're functional, and they make you cash. But for the actual players who want to be really, really efficient, at this point, you probably want to switch into some uh, marketplaces. You probably want to switch into just a couple of them, get a couple of these third tiers, eventually try to force yourself into a fourth tier, and then you could start building some banks. But the way I would build my banks is almost always you want to get monkey banks combined together. Get all three of them at the same time if you can. Uh, or very similar rounds to each other, and then when you press the collect all button, whoosh, you slurp all that money together, you get an extra $30,000 to spend on other upgrades, like your fourth tier banana farms, or your central markets to make you extra lives and things like that. So, one other thing to mention, just really, really quickly, is that central markets are a bit of a support tower, if that makes sense. Yes, you get extra money from merchantmen, but you also make extra lives which could be a bit of a help uh, in later on as well. So even though it's not super duper ridiculously efficient, you do get some other perks and other benefits that you don't get from having these top paths. They just make money, man. That's all they do. They just make money. So if this video helped you guys out at all, make sure you press that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, let me know if you disagree with any of my thoughts in the comments below. Um, I will be making a video on other ways to make income later on, but for now, I wanted to focus on banana farms because I think that they're just a difficult thing to understand. Um, in general, my, my basic idea to you guys is as long as you're building banana farms, as long as you're spending money in banana farms somehow, you're doing good. But if you want to be efficient and you want to be the best BTD6 player out there, you should understand what those efficiency ratings mean and how they actually play and correlate into the game. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and have a super duper delicious day.